Okay, let's start with a few announcements. So the exam solutions are posted. The grades are also posted. If you have any general questions about the exam, uh, please stop by office hours after class. If you have any questions about your grade or do you want to, you want to talk about the, uh, the grades, uh, please shoot me an email and we can either do it by email or I can set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with you and we can talk about it. So either way, that's fine with me. <clears throat> uh, let's see, the schedule has been updated on Canvas. That's the PDF file, and it should show that there's no homework or quiz due this week. Homework seven will be due next week. Prelab eight will be due this week, so you can work on that in instead of homework this week, and you'll start lab eight this Friday. Lecture slides are updated to the latest slides on Canvas, so you can take a look at uh, Canvas for the uh, the op amp slides and comparator slides. And as always, my office hours will be right after class. TA's office hours are posted on Canvas. And if you have any questions during class, please uh, unmute or shoot me a chat. Um, Professor? Yes. I noticed that the updated schedule still has like that we would have fall break the whole week of Thanksgiving, <clears throat> but um, the university is like still having classes Monday through Wednesday of that week. So oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get that updated. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, that, I was just looking at the assignments, not the, uh, not the vacation. So I'll get that fixed. Okay, so uh, let's get started with uh, the material on op amps. I wanna continue op amps today, continue comparators. On the screen now, you see uh, the decision tree, I like to call it, for analyzing an op-amp circuit. And so the first thing we did in this class when we talked about op-amps, we went down the left-hand side of the tree. We talked about circuits with negative feedback. They were linear op-amp circuits. And then we started talking about comparators during the last real class, uh, where you have no negative feedback. Uh, when you have an op-amp circuit, at least in this class, that does not have negative feedback, it's going to be a comparator or a comparator, and that uh, compares two voltages. And we're going to talk about a, a simple comparator and a comparator with hysteresis. And so let me switch over to the whiteboard now. And we will continue our discussion with comparators see what's going on here. Looks like my screen shifted a bit here. Okay. Okay, so what you should see here once I get this straight on my screen, sorry about that. Something's not working quite right. There it goes. So this is what we talked about last time. Um, I drew an op amp, just an op amp that was powered by two power supplies, VCC and VEE. And I defined the voltages as we do in this class, V1 at the non-inverting input, V2 at the inverting input. And I did not have negative feedback uh, in this circuit. So, and we talked about the limitations also that the output voltage of an op amp has to fall between VCC and VEE. It cannot go outside of those bounding voltages. So when we had uh, this example, V1 was greater than V2, the output went to, well, VCC. And when, the, when V1 was less than V2, the output went to VEE. In this case, those were five volts and zero volts, respectively. And I said, well, this can be used as, as a, a circuit that could be used in something like a thermostat. <clears throat> so if you had a temperature sensor uh, somehow, and we'll talk about this, whose output voltage is proportional to temperature. So temperature goes up, voltage goes up. Then apply that to the input of a comparator and have a single threshold that we're going to call V ref right here. Uh, the, the 
uh, and then have an output voltage that is a control voltage for the heater. So if the output goes high, the heater turns on. If the output goes low, the heater turns off. And I drew this kind of characteristic. This is what we want out of a circuit that compares two voltages for a thermostat for a heater. So in this case, let me just bring something else up here. Zoom likes to shut off windows on me. <clears throat> so in this case, when the input voltage was less than V ref, right, the output is high because, well, the temperature is cold, right? Maybe this is some temperature set point that you have set on your thermostat. When it's cold, you want the output high so the heater turns on. And then when the, the, the uh, input is greater than V ref, you want the output low or off so the heater turns off. This comparator has uh, one threshold, and so we're going to call that a simple comparator. Okay, and we'll contrast that with a comparator with hysteresis later. So let's create a circuit that that does this and let me show you what is called an inverting comparator it's an inverting comparator because well it inverts the output compared to the input when the input is high the output is low when the input is low the output is high so we call that an inverting comparator um professor yes can you say again what makes a simple comparator a simple a simple comparator sure uh, we're defining a simple comparator to have one threshold, this one oh. VREF threshold. Uh, what we're going to see later is that there's a comparator with two thresholds, and that will be a comparator with hysteresis. Okay, thank you. So, so let's start off with, uh, let's see, just an op amp. Start out in the center, an op amp. I'm going to put the inverting input on the top. And we're going to call uh, the terminal that connects to the inverting input the input voltage Vn. So this would be like this, this input voltage from maybe a temperature sensor. And so that voltage is going to be compared against, right? We're comparing two voltages here. That voltage is going to be compared against this V ref voltage, right? That node voltage there at the non inverting input. Um, and the values of VCC, um, I'm going to make, let's bring it up here, let's make it five volts. So the output is going to either be five volts or zero volts, just like it was over here on the left. And let me bring the, let me bring this V out terminal way out here. I'm gonna add something in here to the left of this terminal. Okay, so the V in is going to be this input from, let's say, a temperature sensor that I want to compare against this reference. Well, what I can do, I can create a reference voltage with, well, a uh, voltage divider. Oh, let me make that R2 at the bottom. And what I would like to do is have this voltage V ref uh, be able to be adjustable with by adjusting these resistors uh, between five volts and zero volts. So all I'm going to do is connect the top of this voltage divider to five volts like that. So now V ref can be any voltage, depending upon what these resistors are, between zero volts and five volts. That's going to be my set point for this thermostat, for this inverting comparator. Okay. Um, so and, and I'm going to add a resistor over here in a minute. You'll you'll see. I'll I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you just look at this value v ref, like what would it be? 
you could calculate that value as uh, a voltage divider. We have series resistors, right? R1 is in series with R2 because remember, zero current goes into the input of an op amp. Op amps have high impedance inputs. They look like really big resistors. So maybe nano amps flow into their inputs. So I'm gonna call that current zero going into the input of the op amp. That means all the current that goes, practically all the current that goes through resistor R1 also goes through resistor R2. They are in series. So I can consider these resistors to have five volts across them. So I can say that V ref is equal to VCC times the ratio of, right, it's just a voltage divider, R2, the resistor across which I want to try to, I want to find the voltage, right? That's what V ref is, it's across R2 over the sum of the series resistors, okay? So, so for this circuit, uh, this is the expression that determines when the heater is going to turn on and off, right? So when VN goes above VREF, right, VN above VREF, the output is going to go low. When VN goes less than VREF, right down here, the output's going to go high. And so I can write that as, as sort of an expression here. So V out is going to be uh, high VCC, right, five volts in this case, when V1 is greater than V2, and it's going to be VEE, zero volts in this case, when V1 is less than V2, okay? And so this is uh, V1, V2, I'm relating this back to the, the op amp voltage definitions. Uh, another way to write this for this op amp is so V out equals, let's see here, this is gonna be a VCC, right? When V1 is greater than V2, let's call that V2 is, uh, VN is less than VREF. So the input voltage is less than the threshold. It's gonna be VEE, the low voltage when VN is greater than the threshold. Okay, so, um, so this circuit on the right is, is doing exactly what the circuit on the left is doing, or as I described it, um, I'm just using a resistive divider to create the reference voltage to let's say set a temperature for a thermostat. And you can imagine you might put a potentiometer here, right, to make the uh, voltage divider a, a variable voltage like we did right back in the circuits part of the class. You could put a you could put a potentiometer here and vary V ref to control the temperature that's maintained by the heater. Okay. L let me throw another resistor in here. Now let me start by saying you, you saw in the last class that there's there's always a margin in voltage between the output uh, voltage and VCC and the output voltage and VEE, right? The, that output voltage swing limitation, especially for cheap op amps, has, has a margin in there. There's a specialized circuit, uh, integrated circuit, that you would use in a comparator, and you have one of these in your kit, that has a little different configuration than an op amp. Let me put this resistor here. And, and for right now, I'm going to call this uh, R3 and I'm gonna make it 1K ohm. I'll tell you why in a second. Because these specialized comparator chips, um, they don't act like regular op amps. They actually, they actually don't, um, they don't act like linear, you couldn't use them in a linear amplifier circuit. They don't really act like this, but you could still analyze the circuit as if it were an op amp circuit. Now, let me go back. You could take a regular op amp, you could put it in the circuit, and V out would be something like maybe four volts, not five volts. But if you want the output to be five volts uh, when, when it's intended to be high, then, then you have to use one of these uh, specialized uh, circuits. L let me draw what's inside of 
of one of these specialized integrated circuits. I'll draw like a big op amp here. Um, Professor? Yes. Can you kind of go over how we got the equation for V ref again? Oh, sure. Uh, so this is a, a voltage divider. You have five volts or from here, right from that top node to this bottom node, you have the voltage VCC. Yes. Right. So you have a, a, a voltage across two series resistors, right? Because this current going into the input here is zero. So you have two series resistors and this is the voltage divider equation for two series resistors when you want the voltage across R2. Does that make sense? Okay, and we know that that's, um, how, how do we know that that's also V ref just because the voltage doesn't change from there to the non-inverting input? Oh, no, well, the V ref is a node voltage at this node. So a node okay. voltage is the voltage between this node and ground. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sure. Okay, so, so inside uh, this, again, specialized op amp circuit, I'm gonna draw it as a switch and then I'm gonna erase it and draw it as a transistor. But it looks like something like this, um, where this is, let's say five volts VCC. This comparator chip, what it does it, is it either applies uh, an open to the output or it closes the switch to the output, depending upon if the output is intended to be high or low. If the output, uh, you know, according to this comparison here of V1 and V2, if the output is intended to be low, this switch closes. I'm going to draw it closed here. So the output is connected directly to ground. If the output is intended to be high, right, V out equals VCC, then this switch opens up. That's what the chip does. It opens up the switch and the output is left floating. It's not connected to anything. So there is no voltage. It's just left there like a wire hanging in space. So what you have to do is you actually have to connect some kind of high, high voltage to the output in order to make the output high when it's intended to do so. So for example, if I add this resistor here, when this switch is, when this switch is closed, right, then we have five volts across a 1K ohm resistor. I have what, five milliamps flowing down, but the output is connected directly to ground. So the output is low. When the output is intended to be high, that switch opens up. And so what happens now? You assume that there's very little current going out of the output. We're gonna assume anything connected to this output is high impedance, right, big resistor. And so you have five volts connected uh, to the output through this 1K ohm resistor. Well, right now, right, with nothing connected or even maybe a big resistor connected out here, the output is approximately five volts, right? There's zero voltage drop across that 1K ohm resistor because there's no current going through it. Okay, so the output would be five volts. Um, so, so that's how this chip works. It has a switch inside that either closes or opens. And in order to provide the high output when it's supposed to be high, you have to add this resistor, okay? In reality, this, this is not a switch. I'm gonna erase this like I said I would. It's really a transistor. So let me draw a transistor here. So there's a transistor connected like that. And as you know, this transistor can be saturated or it can be left in cutoff when it's acting like a switch. So inside this, this op amp, um, in, instead of the switch, you have this transistor. And so when the output is intended to be low, the transistor is saturated, meaning right, VCE is something really small. <clears throat> so V out goes to something really small. And when the output is intended to be high, the transistor is left in cutoff. So no current flows. Okay, this is essentially open here. And then the output voltage is provided through this resistor, right, to VCC. That's called an open collector output. That's an L.
And so open collector outputs are, typically are connected well. The, the collector is connected to the output. There's nothing else connected. And that chip has the ability to pull the output to ground, connect it to ground, or just leave it open, leave it floating. And then if you want a high voltage there of some sort, you, you have to connect that voltage to the output through a resistor, okay? 1K ohm is usually chosen because, <clears throat> well, that's probably a value much smaller than whatever you would connect to the output here, right? So if I have, let's say, a 100K ohm resistor connected to the output, uh, then the output's gonna be like 4.9 something volts, right? It's not gonna be exactly five because this is a voltage divider. But typically you assume that this load resistor is going to be big, <clears throat> okay? This, this whole discussion here, is just to tell you that's why there's a resistor R3 in this inverting comparator circuit. That resistor R3 provides the output voltage when the output's intended to be high. And then when the output is intended to be low, there's a essentially a short to ground uh, inside the chip and some current flows through that resistor. Okay. Um, professor? Yes. I'm still kind of confused about how the, the resistor is what makes the V out large when we want it large. Like I understand the whole um, quote unquote switch actually transistor being shut and then, so then V out has zero volts in that same node, but I, I'm still not quite sure how the resistor plays into making the V out large. Oh, 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 how, how this resistor or how this resistor plays into it? The one K ohm one. The one K ohm, okay. So, so let's, let's go back to a switch here just so I can open and close the switch. Okay, so if I have uh, this this circuit, right? And so let me draw a ground here. This is V out, right? And if I have uh, no current flowing, like let's say this switch is open, I have no current flowing through that resistor because there's nowhere for it to go. Uh, this is zero amps. So this is zero volts. So the output voltage is equal to VCC, right? There's no voltage difference between the output and VCC. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then when I close the switch, I actually have uh, five volts, right? You can do the KVL. I have five volts across this resistor. I have one million, uh, five milliamps flowing through that resistor, right, to ground. And the, the output is connected directly to ground. That node is now grounded. So the output is zero volts. Mm. Does that make sense yeah. that if the output is connected directly to ground that that's zero volts now? Yeah, I, I understand that part. I'm a little confused like why, so where is the circuit like connected such that zero amps flows through the resistor when the switch is open? Oh, when the switch is open, okay. So when the switch is open like that, Okay, there, there's, uh, let's see. So the current has nowhere to go, right? It can't go out of an open here, like that's zero amps, right? Mm -hmm. And that's zero amps. And so this is zero amps. Okay. And Ohm's law says if you have zero amps through a resistor, that's zero volts. Okay. But because we still have, so why, why is it that we still have like, Five volts though at V out when there's like zero current flowing. Oh, oh, why is this five volts now? Yeah. Okay. Well, because uh, let's let's call this V out, right? And remember, VCC. This is presumably a voltage. Oh, is that off the screen now? This is presumably a voltage source that's connected here, five volts, right? Powering VCC here. So if I run a KVL minus five. Right, minus five uh, plus zero plus V out equals zero. So V out equals five. Okay, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when the switch is closed, then that allows current to flow through the resistor. And that's yeah, the yeah. And in fact, and then that node is connected directly to ground. So this goes to zero volts here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. So, so this, uh, the takeaway for this circuit is this is an inverting comparator, an op amp 
with three resistors connected like this. And you set the reference voltage using a voltage divider, okay? Uh, you know, fixed resistors or otherwise, it could be a potentiometer to make it adjustable. And, and it has this characteristic that when the input voltage is high, the output is low. When the input voltage is low, the output is high. That's called an inverting comparator. And that's appropriate for the characteristic that you want for, well, a, a heater thermostat, okay? So um, this comparator works great. It's commonly used. Let me show you uh, a problem that it has, and that's going to motivate talking about a comparator with hysteresis, okay? So let's see. Let me get rid of this. I'm going to try to leave that characteristic in the bottom there. So I want to look at this simple comparator characteristic in a little different way. Uh, I want to plot the input voltage versus time. and the output voltage versus time. And on this input voltage uh, plot, I'm gonna draw the right, this red dotted line. That's, that's my value V ref. That's the threshold voltage. So if the uh, voltage goes, let's see, if the input voltage goes ab above VREF, the output is low. Uh, the input voltage is lower than VREF, the output is high. Okay, so let's assume that the input voltage uh, does something like this. Let's say it's a rising value and it has noise on it. The key here is noise. It's got this noise. I'm just gonna draw kind of like a jaggedy Signal just to exaggerate noise. Do something like that. Okay, so we know that when the input voltage is less than VREF, the output is high. So in this case, the output is high. And then as soon as I have this, you know, dot, dot, dot crossing uh, of the reference voltage of the threshold, either way, threshold or reference, the, the output is going to go low. But then because of the noise, right, dot, 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 I've got the input going lower than the threshold, right? And like again here. So you can see, you can kind of see how this is working. I have a few crossings of that threshold because of the noise. And this may or may not be desirable. If this is a heater and this noise is like high frequency, so there's a really, you know, very small time between these on and off cycles, um, that might be fine. It, it would work fine for a heater. But let's suppose this is maybe a light detector detecting uh, a, a laser beam that crosses a hallway and you're trying to detect the intensity of light and trying to see if if the light goes away, right? You're trying to detect, is the light there or is the light gone away uh, with some kind of light detector? Well, then if this kind of characteristic happened and you're, let's say you're counting edges with a microcontroller. So you're counting the fall times, one, two, three. You'd count three people crossing through the laser beam, right? Instead of, well, one person because of this noise on the signal. It's just an application, uh, one example of an application, but you can think of others where you might not want this, this on off, on off, finally off characteristic uh, in, in noise, okay, in the presence of noise. So, so what we're gonna do is we're going to use a different kind of comparator. It's called a comparator with hysteresis. Let's draw what that comparator looks like or it's, output versus input characteristic. I should say what we want, what we want out of the circuit. Um, Professor? Yes. 
So when in what what instances would you have noise like that where it you know has little peaks over the ref? Mm -hmm. So if you yeah, the, the answer is every signal has noise on it. Okay. Every every yeah. signal, every um, so electrons have random movements, and that causes noise, causes thermal noise. We call it or Johnson noise um, in every circuit. It that's one cause. Another cause is electromagnetic fields in the environment. Fluorescent lights are notorious for this. If you take your oscilloscope and you touch your finger to the oscilloscope and you're anywhere near uh, uh, a fluorescent light, the ballast in it creates a lot of noise. So you would, you would see this kind of, and it would be 60 hertz in that case, you'd see a lot of noise on the, on the voltage. Okay, so, so there's, noise, there's noise everywhere. Um, unless you're sitting there at absolute zero, which is kind of hard to get. So. so so then does it follow that like, we'll never really have a simple comparator that has a graph like that on the bottom? Um, if you use this to control the heater, let's say, and this was like, I don't know, a couple milliseconds, like maybe that's a, maybe one or two milliseconds, you wouldn't really care. The heater might um, turn might try to turn on and off and on and off, but probably there's a capacitor on the control line that wouldn't let the heater turn on and off this rapidly in a couple milliseconds. Oh. So for a heater, this is probably okay. For a device that can react really fast, maybe in microseconds, it would count all of these edges um, as a transition from, from low to high in this case. So, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, so that this would be a good, good um, comparator, cheap comparator, simple comparator for low speed circuits, something like a heater, wouldn't be so good for some kind of high precision, high timing circuit, like you're trying to count, um, uh, you know, uh, some kind of events that have physical events that happen really fast. Maybe you're trying to, maybe you're using two sensors to calculate like the speed of a bullet, like the muzzle velocity of a, of a bullet. And, and well, in that case, this wouldn't work so well, so. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Sure. Okay, so, um, so let's talk about what we do want here. An inverting comparator with hysteresis. Okay, so I'm drawing this characteristic again. This is V out versus V in, just like we did down here for the simple comparator. And you've probably observed this in, in your house. In fact, I'm sure you have that. Let's suppose this is proportional to temperature, just like in our thermostat example. When the temperature is low or the input voltage is low, the output is high, so the heater's running, and the house heats up, right? Temperature's going up, the output's still high because we're still colder than some threshold. And then at some point, the heater turns off, right? So we do that. And then maybe it's one of those warm Colorado days and the house heats up because of the sun. So the heater's not on, but the house is heating up a little more, right? And then maybe, uh, maybe the house cools down it's nighttime, but the heater doesn't turn on at exactly the same temperature where it turned off, right? It, it's allowed to get a little cooler and then the heater turns on, right? So you could see this, you could watch your thermostat, uh, your, your, your furnace in your house, your apartment, uh, the house gets warm, apartment gets warm, the heater turns off. It doesn't like when the when the temperature cools down by 0 0.0001 degrees Fahrenheit, the heater doesn't turn on right away. Um, it doesn't cycle on and off every two seconds. Uh, the heater waits until the temperature cools down a little bit, and then it turns on again. That's an example of hysteresis. And there are two thresholds, right? VA1 and VA2. So the threshold where the heater turns off is called VA1. 
temperature where the heater turns on is called VA2, and there are two different thresholds. And here, I'm going to put arrows here, this is called the hysteresis band. I can't spell today. That's the hysteresis band, okay? And I'll show you a circuit that does this, but let me show you how this gets around this, this noise problem. So what I'm gonna do is redraw this. So this is time and VN, right? I'm duplicating this, this plot on the top here, except now I have to draw two thresholds. I have this upper threshold, VA1. And a lower threshold, VA2. And let me attempt to put that same noisy signal, except I'm going to go up and then I'm going to go down. So you have something like this. Right, there's a really noisy signal. Okay, so let's look at what happens at the output. Okay, so let's suppose that the input's way down here below VA2. So the output is high. Draw that in blue. The output is high. And the output's going to stay high until the input reaches VA1. So right here. And then the output's going to go low. Now, as soon as that output is low, the threshold changes. The threshold is now VA2. The heater's not going to turn on again or the output of the comparator is not going to go high again until the input voltage goes below or reaches VA2. So even though I'm crossing this threshold a couple times here, right, I'm going below the threshold, once the comparator has a state change because, oops, has a state change because um, the input voltage exceeded VA1, now the new threshold is VA2. So now, the heater is not going to turn on again. The comparator is not going to go high again until the threshold VA2 is crossed, right? Just like here. So if this hysteresis band or this hysteresis band is bigger than the magnitude of the noise, right, that span of that noise, then you get these nice clean transitions. So again, if you had like a laser beam across a hallway, you're trying to count people walking by, count edges, right, um, with a microcontroller, it, it can do that. Uh, you would only have one falling transition here. Okay, so you get one person counted. Um, you don't get this kind of noisy response. So that's, that's this is what we want to create we want to create a circuit that does this where the thresholds change based on the output state. Okay. Any questions on that concept there? Uh, Professor, I think you have a question in the chat. Oh, thank you. Let's see. Is this how sensors for automatic lights work too? Um, they can. So uh, it, it, it depends on, so an automatic light sensor, if you're talking about the kind that, uh, you know, turn on when the lights get dark, they, that is one way to implement them. I've actually implemented them that way. When the light sensor has a low output voltage, um, the, uh, it, it energizes a circuit that turns the light on. So either through a transistor or through a relay or maybe a solid state relay. Okay. Okay. So let's now create a circuit that does this. 
implements this characteristic. And I'm going to start off with a, uh, a simple comparator. You'll see how this relates. Okay, so there's my circuit. Professor? Yes. So I was thinking, so um, in that bottom little chart that you drew with the out teeth, so the first section threshold is VA1, the second section threshold is VA2. In that next section, what's the threshold? Oh, so now since the output is high, the, the the state change would happen at VA1 again. Okay. So this blue line would have to exceed VA1 in order for the state to change. Okay, so do, do the thresholds just alternate then? They do, they do. Yeah, just like they do up here, right? So when the output is high, you, you can only go down uh, with VA1, right? You can only, only go from high to low by crossing VA1. Uh, when the output is low, you can only increase the output, go to a high state by crossing VA2. Okay, I see. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this right here is, well, this is the same that I drew before. All right, so that's, that's the same. That should look like an inverting, a simple inverting comparator. That's what that is. Um, this is R. I'm going to call this R4 now. That's called R4 now, and it's maybe 1K ohm. Okay. Um, and let's put VEE here, ground it. Okay, so this is just uh, an inverting comparator, a simple inverting comparator. In order to give this the feature of hysteresis, I'm actually going to connect the output to this node on the right, call it R3. Okay, so all I did is I added that value, that resistor R3. Now, there is a connection between the output and an input of the op amp, but it's not negative feedback. In fact, it's positive feedback. Um, so this is not a linear circuit. So when you see some connection between the output and the non-inverting input, that is not negative feedback. Also, you'll notice, hey, there's some connection between, look, the output, and I can go back here, and, uh, let's see. Well, no, it's not in this case. I don't have, if I, put a, if I put a voltage source, right, if I put a voltage source off of VN and I connect it to ground, I could find some way to trace a path, uh, let's see, from the output through a power supply node down to ground and maybe up to VN, and you'd say, hey, there's negative feedback. But remember, negative feedback cannot be through, I'll say, a power supply uh, node, right? I can't go up and go through a node that's held at a node voltage by a power supply and consider that negative feedback. So this circuit does not have negative feedback. Okay, so let's analyze this circuit. And I want to show you why the uh, threshold, in this case, we're going to call this VA because there's, a, there's an application note that uses the variable VA. It's linked on the website. Um, I'm going to show you that why this threshold voltage, now called VA, switches between V1, VA1 and VA2. Okay? And it, the reason is this resistor R3. Okay. So, um, so let's do this. Let's let's suppose that the output initially is in the high state, right? So I'm going to assume the output is high. That's that's the starting state. So let's say V out equals five volts, right? Or VCC. 
Okay, that I can draw an equivalent circuit when the output is five volts between uh, the, to figure out what VA is. Let me show you what I mean. I want the relevant circuits, the relevant circuit elements around VA to figure out what VA is. So I have a resistor connected between VCC, which is five volts, right? R1. And this node that I'm calling VA here, right? So I'm right there. And then I have another resistor, R2, that goes to ground, okay? Um, and then I have this resistor, R3. Let's draw that in. So here's VCC, R1 to VA, R2 to ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to account for R3. Now R3 goes between the VA node and the output node. But the output is five volts, right? The output is five volts. So I have to connect R3 between VA and what I'm calling five volts, right? The output is five volts. So I'm gonna put R3 right here, right? Because it's doing essentially the same thing. I'm connecting R3 between VA, VA, and the output, which I'm saying is five volts or VCC. Okay, so um, what I can what I can do is I can actually say, well, let me write this here, VA. I can calculate now VA based on a voltage divider formula. Right. Uh, remember, there's no current going into the op amp or very little current, so I consider uh, that this node connected to VA at the op amp, essentially an open, that's why this is open here. And I can create a voltage divider now. I want the voltage VA, right? That's the voltage VA. And that equals, well, from a voltage divider formula, it's VCC, I told you we'd be using voltage division a lot. VCC times the resistance across which you're trying to find the voltage, divided by the sum of the resistances. And in this case, it's uh, R1 in parallel with R3 on the top plus R2. Okay. And so what this R3 does, uh, let's suppose I take R3 out of the circuit. If I take R3 out of the circuit, I have some value of VA. If then I insert R3, it makes this top equivalent resistance smaller, which causes VA to be a higher value. When you take this resistor up top and you make it a smaller value, it's gonna bring the voltage up to higher uh, to, this, to this top value. So this is actually the higher um, threshold value, which is VA1. Okay. So that's what happens. So, so I've created a circuit right, that when the output is high, I get this higher value VA1. Let me do this for V out equals zero volts or VEE. So in that case, right, I'm gonna draw this equivalent circuit again. I have R1, R2, and in this case, uh, the resistor R3 is connected to the VA node, VA, and zero volts, right? Here's VA, V out is zero volts, so I can put R3 right here. That's R3. I've electrically moved R3 because I've changed where that other end of R3 connects based on the, the output voltage. This is VCC, five volts. So now the voltage divider equation would be this. Uh, let's see, VA is across this parallel combination of R2 and R3. So I have VCC times R2 in parallel with R3 over R2 in parallel with R3 plus R1. 
without R3 here, uh, let's say I just had R1 and R2, I'd have some VA value. When I insert R3, it makes this overall equivalent resistance on the bottom a smaller value, which tends to make that VA value smaller than it would be without R3. So this is the lower value. This is VA2, right? This is this lower value. Okay. So, so the takeaway is this. Uh, you can calculate these values, R1, R2, and R3, with these two equations uh, and figure out, well, I want a threshold VA1 of, let's say, 3 volts, and I want a VA2 of 2 volts. And then I can choose a resistor R3, uh, a reasonable value. I'll talk about that next time. And then you could calculate R1 and R2. What I'm going to show you next time is, and it, so this is, this is explaining how VA can change based on the output state of the op amp, right? So you see you get two different values based on the output state. Uh, what I'm going to show you next time is instead of using these equations in the design process, I'm going to list out some steps with some intermediate parameters. And we'll talk about how to, how to actually calculate R1, R2, R3, and well, R4 uh, to achieve a given uh, set of threshold values. Okay. So I'm out of time for today. That's where I want to end for today. Um, in conclusion, please see pre-lab eight. That's due this week. You will start lab eight on Friday. Remember the exam solutions are posted. Take a look at those. If you have any grading questions, uh, uh, let me know by email and we can always uh, join a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session. Okay, thanks for joining class. I hope it's working out well. Please let me know if it's not or if anything isn't, and I will start office hours in about a minute. Thanks for joining today's class.